Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a new experience and then I'm very happy that we have members of the parliament who are taking uh, conversations that are quite relevant to young people as well. This is our second sitting in a year and uh, we are testing, we are experiencing and we are learning what it means to be a parliamentarian. So everything that we did here is us trying to keep up with what it means to be a parliamentarian, learning by first hand experience what we are supposed to do. However, I'm very, very happy with members that discuss issues that are very, very uh, they are very, very important to young people as well, for the development of young people. So I'm hoping that by tomorrow we we'll also go more in depth on those issues that affect young people and then come up with a resolution that will be relevant to the development of young people as well. Six motions were raised, you were able to address four of them, even for the main two for the government. But how optimistic are you that government will be able to listen to some of the motions and be able to put them into it? Thank you. I think that from President, I, I would always refer to the most recent one, which is the National Youth Investment Fund. The good thing about the Parliament is a program by the government. So part of our recommendation goes directly to the National Assembly and the Federal Ministry of Youth Transport all the way to the to the president as well. What happens is that when these recommendations get to those um, agencies, those government um, parastatals, they are redefined. Of course, if they're going to go into a bill or a policy, a, a policy or you know an act of parliament, they are well revived. But the objective of such policy or to, uh, of, of such uh, engagement will be to achieve what we've discussed here. So I'm fully optimistic that by next year we'll be having one or two uh, uh, policy proposal or something that we want to advocate as a result of the sitting that we've had here today as well. We also noticed some dissent. Yes. We are is that the beauty of uh, yes Nigeria? yes that's definitely the beauty and as the first female speaker of the Nigerian Youth Parliament it was an experience that I was really open to having it's politics as well and it's something that is understandable and this just shows you that we try to practice as much as possible not once not twice as members of opposition grieving members have walked out of the of, of the chambers both at the Senate and the House of Reps to express their opinion as well I think what is most best is that after this sitting we'll we we'll go back to our drawing table, we'll have the conversations to bring to harmonize there. So it is it is the practice and it is what is expected for leadership as well. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. First of all, a learning platform for young people across, especially young people who are interested in legislative and public service, for us to gain the experience, both hands-on experience and internship training as well, for us to be better parliamentarians or to apply ourselves to the aspect of democracy. It is usually a two-year tenure with one and nine members that is mirrored to the Senate as well. So we have representative youth leaders in their own sphere from three senatorial districts from the state who come here for the period of one year to have that experience as well. Okay, you selected the for such election? So the first thing there is that the, according to our starting order, the first thing is that the only position that is uh, elective is the speaker and deputy speaker, and last year we had that position. So in respect to young people who have been very productive in one way or the other, based on previous presidents and also our coordinator and governing council for, for the Nigerian parliament, young people who have shown themselves or who represent the various um, differences that we have within the parliament have been selected. So whether by region, whether by uh, state, you understand collaboration. But the process is not just by selection. First of the things that we do is consultation at the level of the caucus and the level of the state as well. They agree to have this conversation as well. And more and more what we are going to do subsequently is advocate at the level of the ministry that some of these positions are now open to elected position. You understand, just like we have for the speaker and deputy speaker. But the selection process is not a one-man selection process. Caucus leaders from each zones are consulted. They are the ones that produce, provide the names for nominations. State members are also consulted as well. However, at the level of the ministry and the management that goes through this learning process, when these people have come back, when these people are up on board, they are verified and then, you know, the selection process. Thank you. Thank you.